Hi, it's Kevin Corrigan here in the Notre Dame Lacrosse offices, and uh, I know it's that time of year where you're getting started with practice. We're doing the same uh, not too long ago, and, and uh, so I want to talk a little bit about today is your planning for those first weeks of practice, and, and really kind of having a checklist of the things that you want to make sure that you've gotten done by that first game. And there are a lot of decisions to be made uh, within within this, but this is kind of a general checklist for anybody uh, going into your season, here are the things that you'll want to have done. We like to think uh, in terms of beginning with the end in mind. So we start and back, work backwards from that first game and say, you know, what do we need to have? What do we want to have for that first game? And then, and then work back into the into the the practice schedule. Look at how many weeks we have to to, do, to accomplish this. How many practices are we going to actually have? Film sessions. Blackboard sessions, those kinds of things, and then and then kind of work forward in in planning our work uh, up to that first game. So I know you're doing something very similar. We like to start with a checklist and 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 basically look at the different categories. You know, we start off offensively here, and and there are choices that you're going to make about which of these offenses you might want to have. You may want to have. Uh, a single crease offense and a double crease offense, or you may not care about that. You may just want a single offense, or you may have a lot of offenses. Uh, it, it, that, that's a decision you're going to make as an individual coach, but you need to think about that and, and kind of check off what are you going to have in by that first game. Plays. We're not a real play-oriented offense, but you may want to run some plays. You know, uh, I think plays are good for, for particular situations, and, and, and we, sometimes we like to have a play to just to jumpstart our guys if we don't feel like we're running an offense uh, kind of aggressively enough or getting enough off-ball movement. A, a play sometimes can help that, but I think you got to have plays. And also something so at end-of-game situations, you have somewhere to go, um, even if you do a little variety off of a play. Uh, invert offense, I think, again, sometimes when you're looking at offense and defense, you're working back and forth saying, well, we want to have some invert because we want to prepare against invert. So at the very least, even if we don't see ourselves as being an invert team, we want to put a little bit of invert offense in to make sure that we're prepared when we play against it. That would be the same thing with zone. Uh, we don't run zone defense, but we put in a zone defense so that we can have a zone offense should anybody play zone against us. We don't see a lot of zone in, in college lacrosse. There's a lot more of it in high school lacrosse. But uh, you, situationally, you'll see it coming out of a timeout or that kind of thing. We also like to identify a base offense so that if there's that situation where guys come down and if it's a time where communication's difficult or something, our guys will go into a base offense that, that at least gets us generating things and, and smooths out that transition from the, the clear or the transition situation uh, into a settled offense and, and in a smooth way, and then we can adjust from there. Um, you know, defensively, the things we want to make sure that we've worked on defensively going into the season. We want to make sure that we've identified are we going to slide crease, we're going to slide perimeter. If we're going to do both, that's fine. Uh, we just need to work on both, and we need to, to identify how we're going to play that as you, as you do. Double crease play, regardless, we have to become competent as a double crease defensive team so that people are playing uh, when, when, when they play that against us that we know how to handle that. Um, our one-on-one -on -one perimeter defense, which includes playing inverts and and, and all of those kinds of things, but but identifying how you want to play uh, according to the field. Are you a team that likes to take people away from the center line or the Z line, as we call it? Are you somebody who likes to uh, to take people underneath on the wings, or do you like to, to drive them somewhere else into a, a, a particular slide package? Um, picks on the ball and off the ball are something that, that takes a lot of time, uh, and we'll spend a, a, a significant amount of time doing some of that from the offensive side as well. Um, you know, inverts, again, you have to prepare against the inverts. And, and again, the zone, which we only do to prepare our offense for a zone offense. Back up for a second. I said, you know, kind of beginning with the end in mind, because one of the things you got to think about right from the beginning is your skill drills. So say apply to offense and defense or anything, any other situation. You know, your ball handling, for instance. When you're handling the ball, we don't like line drills. We don't do any line drills, but but you need to get those touches. It's you know the thing the, the value of line drills is you get a lot of touches in a short time, and you need to get those touches both to warm your guys up to to continue to develop their skills and that kind of thing. But we like those touches to be in a in more of a um, 
of a realistic situation. We, we want our touches to be pieces of our offense. So we'll take our attack for the first 10 minutes, and they'll work together, our middies will work together, our defense will work together. So they're all, they're all getting those multiple touches that you want, but they're getting them out of the, the, the pieces of our offense that we might have. And some days we may combine groups and, and do something. The same applies to our shooting. We want to make sure that we're practicing the shots that we're getting in games. So we want to make sure we're doing a good job of looking at our film, evaluating the kinds of shots we're getting, what, what's the nature of those shots, and that we're practicing those shots when we're doing our shooting drills and, and, and practicing the ball movement that leads into those shots as we practice our, 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 our skill development stuff because we don't want to just do that stuff. We don't want to just get those touches. We want them to be real and we want them to be applicable. Your goalie plays certainly the skill. When it comes to the skills, you've got to have specific things that you're doing with your goalies. And we're going to get into all of this a little bit in, in, in future um, presentations here. We'll, we'll break down all of this and, and, and kind of take things case by case. But, but right now, this is kind of that checklist that you want to make sure you, you, you sat down and identified those things you want to do those first weeks of practice leading into the first game. The last thing I'll call athletic movement. It, it, it starts with stretching and warm-up, and, and, and uh, you know, we do a thing we call the ticker where we have our guys make, you know, doing various movements, uh, you know, shuffling and turning and dropping on a 45 and doing that just to identify and to, to reinforce those important um, fundamental mechanics of, of movement, okay? Uh, you've seen Jerry do in some of our other presentations the star drill or some of the defensive drills that he does where we're mimicking the, the, the movements of our defenders in, in, in various ways and practicing that movement because you don't take for granted the fundamental nature of, of, of that movement, and we certainly don't, and we think it's something you have to work on right from the beginning. It can be part of your conditioning. Um, we do... Virtually no conditioning. We, 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 we run a two-hour up-tempo practice. It involves a lot of different elements, uh, uh, but doesn't involve resting. It doesn't involve standing around talking a lot. And we think that's enough if our guys have come into our preseason, you know, well-prepared, uh, that that is enough for us to, to, to be able to, to play the game for two hours on, on game days, okay? Uh, transition and, and unsettled play. Uh, two on ones, three on twos, working up, you know, fast breaks and and slow breaks. You have to work on, but you also have to work on those those um, number situations where you know you may have an advantage of one or two. And we, again, we'll go into some different drills in future presentations where where you'll get a, a you know some of the drills that we do to to do those. But I think you have to spend time on all of those. Okay. Um, riding and clearing. You have to look at. You know, riding against deep, riding against pressure, and riding against 10 man. You, you know, whether you 10 man or not, you need to put in a 10 man um, in your ride so that you can clear against it. And, and again, at the very least, you have to spend a little time identifying how we're going to do it and, and what we're going to do. In our clearing game, you've got to work on the inbounds clears as well as the, the settled clears. You've got to work on first the breakouts, the recuts, and substitutions. And this substitutions you could apply to a lot of different situations, but it's become an increasingly important part of the game and making sure you, not only do you have the right personnel on the, on the field, but you're taking advantage of situations to get mismatches and things of that nature. Okay, your man up and man down, uh, identifying sets, what sets you want to play and how to play them, identifying particular plays that you like and, and preparing to play against other people's plays, the riding and clearing elements of, of that, face-offs, don't forget to do man up and man down face-offs for those one minute penalties that happen. Um, and then, and then you've got uh, two up and two down. Again, not things you have to spend a tremendous amount of time on. I'd spend a lot on this and a little on that, but you better spend a little time on it. You don't want to be doing that at, at, at a timeout in your first game. Face-offs, you're going to need to work on your face-off guys, your wing play, and then again, your special situations. Speaking of special situations, right from the first week of practice, I think you should start doing end-of-game situations. It gives your team some poise, gives them some confidence that you have a plan, and, 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 and identifying the personnel that you want to do things with, as well as at least the basic elements of what you want to do. So that one, one overriding thing, ground ball play, you always have to spend a little time on that, and your language. Identify the language that your team's going to use. It needs to be precise, concise, and it needs to be descriptive. It can be your own language. It doesn't have to reflect anybody else's. Thanks very much. I hope that it's helpful to you and your program as you get started these first weeks of practice. We'll be back in, in the next few weeks to talk about some of the drills that we do to execute this plan. Thank you very much.